One thing I'm going to be looking for here, and we say this every single time we watch Epsilon, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be Tommy with a sniper. I'm going to see if he's got one on now, just before we go on to the attacking squad. No, it looks like they're going to play a little bit different. Let's go back on with TCM, but Jerd's going to be rocking that sniper there. It does see somebody not going to convert, though. And this is going to be, like I said, a counterplay game. So we see a lot of teams play the way that TCM is playing right now. They're just going to kind of sit back and try and get a pick on a player flanking from Epsilon. But Epsilon, kind of knowing that, obviously we talked about countering of play styles with these two teams. They're going to play so far back, except they have one player who looks like he's pushed up directly to the top left over in jungle. Don't know who that player is, but we'll keep our eye on him. I've got it's going to be Tommy. And now TCM looks like they want to progress. Like I said... Who's going to get first blood? I fully imagine once somebody actually gets this, the entire map is going to explode with movement. Yeah, you usually never see an uncontested plant over here. And Tommy trying to put pressure on the flank. Moose is going to be able to take him out. And that is a huge first blood for TCM. If they're able to win this offensive round, this has ramifications for the entire map. Oh, going to put them in a great Mad spot Cat. to win. And Mad Cat hits an unreal shot on Jerd right there to even it up. That's a huge play. Shane's gone down and well. It's now two versus three. Favor in, of Epsilon. And Gunshi, if he converted that, it would have been great for his team. He's got his teammate with him, and they he's are. He's just shying away. He has a player on the flank, it looks like. And he's oh, going to get taken out, though. And that is a great call by the guys on Epsilon. They're able to hold that defensive side. It looked a little bit like they were going to lose that defensive round, which would have been huge for the rest of the series. It would have put so much pressure on them to match an offensive win. I'm interested to see what Epsilon has planned on offense. I think Tommy's going to come out with something creative here, yeah. kind of throw TCM off at the beginning Always of the game. Always the leader, Tommy. And you can see the difference in the two booths. Epsilon rapidly talking to each other. Looks almost silent in there. Maybe missing their coach, Swizz. Yeah, Swizz, uh, the coach of Epsilon <laughs> for a very long time. Definitely know he's watching at home. So looks like, let's see what they're going to do on the offensive side. It looks like they're just going to try and go for a standard A push. I kind of figured that maybe they do something mid. It looked Tommy's like Tommy tried down. to push mid. It looks like they're going to go straight up the A street and said, Josh knows there's a player above him. He's just going to play passive. Does not know oh, look where at that. they're trying to flank from. Judge just burst straight across. Wasn't even going to give Mad Cat a split second to hit him. Three versus three now. Epsilon look like they might have a change of tactics. Looks like they're going to try and wrap, and I, I like this call. I mean, they know pretty much they're going to have to watch two players over watching A. Nobody really watches mid, which is kind of odd on this map. Nobody really watches that mid area, and they're going to have one player over on the B site over by jungle. If you can trap that guy by jungle and really just trade this kill, it's an easy site to take, and look at that timing. It's going to be Gunch pushing all the way into the spawn as Epsilon sneaks right by, goes that B site. Here we go. This bomb could go down. TCM are oh, looking for them. It has gone down. We're going to see an explosion of action here. Jerd challenging Josh. Josh gets the bullets on, but doesn't manage to drop him. They will see him here. It's going to be counterplay. Both teams slowing down again. They're looking so desperately for these shots. This is a fairly easy bomb site to hold once you get bombed down. The difficulty is getting in there and actually getting bombed down, but that's a huge first intro kill there by Jerd Swanee. He's going to pick up Gunch on the outside. Now we have a two-on-two. -two. It looks like there was one player on bomb. Oh, He's taken out, Swanee gets and it. that's an absolutely huge round for Epsilon. It puts all the pressure on TCM to win an offensive side. Yeah, I mean, they just seem very, very clicking at the moment, Epsilon. You saw Swanee there. He just came in. Very, very easy for him to pick up those kills. Yeah, it's, it's really odd because you would have said coming in, looking at the series they played the entire week and that TCM was the stronger team. They've been rolling through everybody. Epsilon, they've had some close games Yeah, You're throughout the series. They've dropped a bunch of maps. But in this series, it looks like the players on Epsilon have really turned up. I think they kind of got excited for this moment you know, against these players and this team with all the rivalry and history. Definitely think they've turned up in the moment. Well, we're on board with TCM right now. Maybe being a little bit more aggressive this time around. Gunji holding fire. Moose pumping grenades down. Maybe he's trying to give his teammates a little bit of thing. But Tommy will take down Jerd. And that was a massive kill for the right. Epsilon team. But and now, second player gone down. Because now they know the bomb's down over on A. They know they were trying to get bombed down over there. So you pretty much can flood that A site. There's one player for Epsilon who's pushed all the way up this street. And he's going to be able to make a play if Shane comes out of yellow. So Shane's trying to trap down here. I don't think he knows it. Maybe he really doesn't know. He doesn't know that player oh, is there. That's shot. Tommy. Tommy's able to pick that player up. They're down able to they trade go. the last one. That was a great spot by Tommy. You kind of saw Shane was trapped, didn't know he was trapped. He either came up those yellow steps and got shot from that roof, or if he would have ran around towards that dome area, he would have got taken out in the back by Tommy. So great setup right there from Epsilon. Yeah, Epsilon just seemed to have this uh, ability to just cover all angles and set. They baited a trap for them. Tommy, I mean, he could have lost that gunfight, but it would have 100% been traded away. Absolutely. And then uh, this round becomes even bigger. Epsilon, they really have... 
kind of house money to play with. Up the Rio, you don't expect to win an offensive side. You can kind of throw any strategy at the wall at this point. And it looks like they're Look rushing at those players. Nights. Yeah, and they're rushing players up the middle towards B. You have one player on the flank. You have him highlighted. That is Tommy. He's trying to make a play. He's actually going to be taken now. You have other players pushing over towards that B site now. Looks like that's the one they're going to try and attack. Epsilon uh, takes him really to convert against Epsilon. Gunchy will out shoot there. Swanee just left out. Swanee will pick up one. Looking for the players swarming in. His teammate will pick up two. Now down to a two versus two. Swanee looking for the players. Going to see Jerd. Ex teammates for a long time. Who is going to win this gun battle? It doesn't matter. It's a bait and switch. Shane comes round. Josh now in a one versus two. Perfect teamwork right there out of Shane and Jerd. That bait and switch. Swanee had Jerd dead to right. Now it's going to be Josh left in a 2v1. You know, that's the perfect teamwork we saw out of Jordan Shane. They've been playing with each other forever. You'd expect them to make those type of plays. There you go. This is the difficult scenario, X. If he goes for a plant, he could be vulnerable. And he has got a decent amount of time. He's going to be seen, though, and down he goes. Jerd will get it. And TCM finally able to breathe a sigh of relief as they get a point on the board. So they're able to get a point on the board, kind of, you know, clear the air in the room, you know, yeah. lighten everybody's mood a little bit. But... Yeah, they're you see gonna, Shane visibly relaxed there. Right, but looking at it, realistically, they're still going to need to counter that offensive win by Epsilon with one of their own. Otherwise, oh. they're not going to be able to win this map. They need to win this offense. I think the biggest thing about that is, is TCM may feel a little bit of relief. It's a mental game, and they may just be able to be a little bit quicker. Well, yeah, just to get that first round on the board, it's huge for your mentality, but... I mean, everybody knows how the map plays. That would have been a huge first pick if Shane was able to get it. Everyone knows how the map plays. You pretty much have to either force action up the middle or on a flank and then try and win an offensive side that way. And that first blood by Moose is huge. They need to take advantage of it. They had first blood in the first round as well, and they didn't win that one. So you're going to need to see them actually take that first blood and use it to their advantage. There we go. Jerd looking for a play. I think you can see Swan in the background. He is going to get that on. Moose will get a kill as well. Now, now a two versus four for Epsilon. This is looking very promising for TCM here. Now, Judd, frantically moving around. I'll be honest with you, Judd is trying to make me dizzy with how he quick hunting. he goes. He is hunting for these kills. He knows there's a player behind here. He's going to be able to take him out, trade that one, and it looks like TCM able to counter that offensive round. So now things get I feel interesting. Like, I feel like Judd's got into predator mode there. He was just moving at the speed of light. Right. Now things get a little bit more interesting because they counter that offensive round with a win. So now we're about even because now they go back to a defensive round. Now the pressure's back on Epsilon to take another offensive side which it's extremely difficult to do. You would think this is going to go back to a 3-3 scenario, and we're going to be about even. Yeah, I think we're going to a 3-3 here. I mean, like I said, there was a difference in the TCM team, and you actually felt it then when you were watching them. Now on board with Mad Cat, he's actually going to play very, very passive as well. I might switch to someone being you know, a bit more You aggressive. know what I would like to see right here? I would like to see Epsilon kill the player in the back on the A side. That's going to be Shane. If they can take Shane out, instead of just sitting oh, on that A bomb... Hunted. Ooh, oh, Shane, Shane able, taking a, a nice down. pick. If they were able to kill Shane right there, I love the push of just going straight through that A street and getting behind because then you kind of flip sides of the map because at that point the defenders are coming towards the attacker spawn. You're going to take the defensive side and you can pretty much play from the favorable spot. Okay, and a one versus three. TCM on the hunt. This is not a good scenario for him. Doesn't have the bomb. He's going to have to look for it. I think Gunchy's going to see him. He goes for the shots. He is going to pick that one up. Will it be traded away? TCM are putting shots down. Matt gets oh. alive. Not able to turn and burn. And it is all evened up. And suddenly we have a game in our hands. He stayed alive for way too long. But I could definitely see this coming. 3-3. Three, three. Yep. Definitely TCM evening it up. Now, for the Jared rest... Jerd is making some serious moves. No, Jerd's making some serious plays. I mean, even in the hard point. I mean, he was phenomenal. Just couldn't get that win for the team. But now it's going to get... Down to, you know, who can clutch up one more offensive round. When you really look at it, you just need to win one of the next offensive rounds you have. If you're able to do that, you're pretty much solidified this map. Let's go on board with King Judd here. He seems to be a very influential, influential factor. Let's see what he can do. He is actually slant. Oh, he could see a player here. I don't know if he was peaked at all. Very, very passive between these two. Nate's coming in. He's going to go challenging. He's going to get taken down by Tommy. Went for the risky move to push him. And just wasn't able to get his gun back out in you time. Know, I, I don't mind that push alone because it's so difficult to win these rounds on offense on this map that if you have a chance to get a first blood like that, you've got to take advantage of it. You know a player's there. You know you can challenge him. You might as well try. And that's going to be a quick defensive round win for Epsilon. Now, going back to offense, something different. It's all we're asking for, Bryce. Something different. You know, yeah. we see him. They tried to go towards A fast. They tried to go towards A slow. Haven't worked. The one round they got, they actually went towards the B. They rotated back. I think they're a little bit worried. But, I mean, Tommy's probably going to go for another flank again. Yeah. He, he's been very aggressive. He's with been his very aggressive up the middle of the map. The other issue they're going to have is Swan. They know that if, if they go down and try to push towards B and Swan on Overwatch somewhere near that area, they could just lose the round. And I think it's the risk they're not taking. You got to risk it. they should. You got to risk it at yeah. this point, I think. 
you're just trying to get that one win. And it looks like Epsilon, they're going to go over towards that A site. And you see that the opposing team, TCM, they're going to be pretty aggressive down over there. But it's going to be Tommy drawing first blood on Jer. That's absolutely huge. They're going to try and get bombed down. Shane hiding right around the van. He's oh, going to take out two piece. players. Mad Cat's going to even it up, though, taking out Gunch up top. Seeing tons of great individual plays by everyone in this series. Well, here we go. Two versus two. Mad Cat and Swanee I like this Shane push. and Moose. Shane gets one, though. It's going to be traded away. It's now one versus one. Moose versus Mad Cat. They're going to see each other, and Moose will win it. And you can see... Mad Cat was disappointed he wasn't able to pick he that got, one up 4-4. Four, four. He got heated up in the moment. Yeah. After he got that one kill, he had a ton of time. He could have, you know, gone back to that mid-cut and kind of got lost on the map, so to speak. Had Moose kind of searching. And uh, I think Mad Cat, in the heat of the moment, really, you know, you get those juices flowing. It's a yeah. grand finals match. You kill one, you know where the other player is. You want to hunt him down. He got a little bit too caught up in the moment. Tried to challenge that. If he would have went away, kind of changes the entire dynamic. I don't that know whether he was expecting that player to be somewhere else than he was. Maybe he was well, just trying to move I'm surprised away from Moose the trade. kind of charged up. He was yeah. behind that head glitch. He ran out there open with an assault rifle. Very difficult shot to hit. Oh, we can see here. Let's go on board with TCM on the attack once again. Epsilon have actually stacked B this time. So Jerd is trying to plant the bomb on that left-hand side of the truck because you can't be seen from this back rock. And also, you can jump in the back of the attacking spawn and you can actually see the bomb from that top rock. So you can have a player sit back there and watch it from a distance and call out to the team if there's other people coming. Well, here we go, Moose. Just looking, making sure nobody comes through that mid-card. Still, four players up from both sides. Epsilon have to make a move. They can see one now. Both two members of TCM picking up kills. And this is where it gets dangerous for Epsilon. The time is running out. When you do that slow of a push, you start to run out of time. And you can't check every single corner. You have to just go for it. And it is going to be another round to TCM. What a comeback. Yeah, the TCM mounting a large comeback. It all started with those offensive wins, though. And they get another one here. And you saw the player behind Moose. He was sitting on the back rock watching that yeah. bomb. That's a great spot to plant. You can have a player sit underneath that yellow you know, rampway down there and just kind of just lay there. And then he can get the call out if the bomb is being defused and whatnot. And he can come out and challenge. You don't have to play sight. This, this is what I thought was a great play. Epsilon, uh, TCM went passive. Uh, and Epsilon, there's, there's two choices. You either go straight in and try to get it as soon as that bomb goes down, knowing that player will be moving. Or you try to pick up a few kills first. Epsilon went for the ladder. Uh, and the problem was they waited a little bit too long to make their move. However, first blood here for Tommy. Epsilon's whole offensive game plan relies around Tommy being able to sneak and flank and get those kills. Getting that first blood is huge. They're going to pick up another one. Looks like they're oh. going to be able to win this round. Just phenomenal gun skill out of them. It looked like TCM just tried to get on that fast push. Playing Flanger is going to be killed. 5-5, five, five. Five, round 11. I love this stuff. Well, who's going to take this one? It's pretty much anyone's game here. Both teams have won offense and defensive rounds. These rounds are great because you find out so much about your teammates and who really, who really has it and wants to play in these games and who doesn't. It's e it, I don't want to say it's easy, but you know, coming into you know, a, a round of 16 match, yeah. a quarterfinal match, you know, there's really not a lot of pressure. And you, can, you, know, you have a clutch situation and it really doesn't get you like a grand finals uh -huh. match. And a lot of players say they're big time players, but this is really where you know, those prime time players show up. Well, TCM on the offense. They have won these rounds before. Can they do it again? A lot of nades going out here. Sometimes you see teams in this situation just pull off a completely unorthodox tactic. However, bomb down. It will be advantage to TCM. It's now three versus three. Players from both teams are going to close in. I think TCM might go passive again. Uh, uh, what I don't understand here is Epsilon, they're going to flood the site from the front. I think the best way to do it is to go on the flank. I think they have a lot of time to work with. They have 30 seconds left. They shouldn't really rush this. And there's going to be one player on the bomb. I don't think he sees. And Gunchy, he's going to get eyes on it. But haven't seen that kill come in yet. And oh, Gunchy's going to get a ninja the defuse in round 11. Oh. You see Matt oh. going crazy in the booth. Oh, hands in. Heads and in Gunchy hands. just, oh, that is a tough one to lose. And... Uh, you know, we had to be quiet during that. There was no way I was giving that one away. No, yeah, I didn't want to say anything. But you look at the ramifications for the rest of the series that round has. You know, you they spend all that. You spend all that energy. You know, coming back from that 3-0 deficit to force that round 11. You kind of throw everything you have into that S and D, and then to, you know, so to lose in that fashion, it's got to be so difficult. The guys on Epsilon have to be feeling great right now.